on today's episode. If small is the new big, then this is pretty big indeed. I'm not quite sure of the significance of the Ninja Turtle, but Tyro means beginner or novice. That describes me pretty well when it comes to quadcopters. Just before we start the build, a description of the contents, starting off with the flight controller. This is an F4 based on the Matek F411 with a built-in OSD. It's a 20 by 20 mounting and supports Betaflight, CleanFlight, iNav, has all the necessary connections there. You can solder to the pads if you wish to. Looking at the supplied ESC now, this is a 20 amp BL Heli 4-in-1 and supports 2 to 6 cells at up to 20 amps. It can support the D-Shot 150, 300 and 600. It's set to 600 by default from the factory. Or you can use PWN one shot 125, one shot 42 or multi-shot. Motors are the 1104 style, 8600 kV and support two to three cells. The camera and VTX combination is based on the Cadix Beetle V2 and it's an all-in-one type design and supports smart audio. The camera sensor is a one-third CMOS with a horizontal resolution of 1200 TVL set at the factory to the PAL TV system, an image ratio of 4 to 3. Clearly we have the carbon fibre frame and the mounting hardware, a strap for the battery, the supplied cables, it's an XT30 for the battery and there's our connectors for the receiver and the connections between the flight controller and the speed controller. Obviously they know my flying style as they included 10 pairs of 65mm two-bladed propellers. All that we're going to need in addition to this will be a flight battery. The recommended batteries are 3 cell, 350 to 450 milliampere hour. And what I'm going to be trying are these high voltage versions of 3S pack. So we'll see how we get on with those. Last but not least, you will need some form of receiver. So my receiver of choice for this is going to be the little FR Sky XM Plus. I believe the best location for this will be underneath the flight stack. Therefore, it will be a good idea to pair it with my transmitter before we get it put in place. Now we can move on to the build proper. Before I go further, I like to do some basic tests. The XM receiver that I have, I needed to flash with the EU LBT firmware as that's my location and how my transmitter is set up. I've soldered the supplied cable to the connector for the receiver. On the flight controller itself I've connected the necessary jumper to enable the S-Bus as this is an S-Bus receiver. Connected the flight controller and soldered on the XT30 connector. Now I can go ahead and plug that in Looking at it under Betaflight, just do a few simple checks that it's working. And the flight controller is indicating to the left there, so the orientation is correct. The port configuration is already set up with the serial receiver on UART1. Moving on to the configuration, that is correct. And as I mentioned, it's set up for DSHOT 600 by default there. Put in the craft name and it was already set, but I've checked that it's set to, to S-Bus. Looking at the power and battery, I'm going to leave those values at default. Checking the failsafe, that's set to drop. And moving on to the receiver. I switch on my radio now. You can see that it's bound. If I check the throttle, that's all good. The yaw, pitch and aileron control. I've set up my AUX switch for arming. Arm motors. That's on AUX 1. AUX 2 is the flight modes. Horizon mode. And AUX 3 will be for the beeper. Let's look in the modes and see that that's set up. And I've been through this already. So the arming sequence on AUX 1 at the top here motors and then the its angle 
it's in the angle mode or stamp mode by default and for horizon mode horizon mode it's just switched up into the middle there and finally I set the beeper up as it was on aux 3 to the center position everything looks good as it should in there we'll just disconnect that for the moment and take a look at the BL heady configurator make sure that that can talk to the ESC and we can power that and read the setup I don't think we need to change anything in here at the moment we may need to come back if any of the motors aren't spinning in the correct direction and change the motor direction but we'll leave that as is we can talk to the speed controller that's the main thing I wanted to check before we assemble things further as I'm going to be sticking the receiver down onto the carbon fibre frame, which is obviously conductive, I've taken the precaution of putting some Plasti Dip. That's how it's uh, how it's sold over here. I think it's available in most countries. It's like a conformal coating. It has two benefits: it will insulate the device and also provide additional support for the antenna cables and for the flight controller cables. To stick it down to the frame, I'm just using some double-sided tape, which is uh, quite a thick double-sided tape, this one, similar to that that can be called carpet tape. So that's going to go on there like that and be held down by the strap. I'm also taking the additional precaution of putting some insulating tape over the top of the antenna connectors. This is going to be quite close to the bottom of the ESC board and don't want anything to go amiss. Now we can turn our attention to fitting the motors. The motors are all identical, there's no clockwise or counterclockwise as the shaft is not threaded, the props are just push on. And it'll be a good idea just to put a small drop of Loctite on the end of each screw, stop it vibrating loose. I've gone ahead and fitted the ESC board and wired up the motors. In this case it's not important to worry about the order of the, the cables. As we saw in the BL Heli configurator, we can reverse the direction of the motors in the software. And I've just tie wrapped them to the arms. I was in a bit of a quandary as to what to do with the receiver antennas. My solution is what I'm terming the uh, dragonfly mod and all I've done is to tie wrap and then heat shrink the antennas down in that uh, rather dragonfly like configuration. I think that will keep them well away from the propellers. If anybody's got any better solutions then please leave a comment below. All that needs to be done now is to fit the flight controller itself and then the camera board on top the camera board is a bit of a poor layout as the VTX wires are on the same side of the circuit board as the antenna. So that has to face up, which means stretching the wires down and out of the base of the unit to be able to plug them into their respective connections. So that's a bit of a faff, but it will work. Let's get those final things done and then I can spin up the motors and check the direction. The build is practically complete now. When you're doing up the screws, remember not to over tighten them. The spacers are only rubber and you can compress them down and we don't want anything shorting out. So leave them at full length and once again just a dab of Loctite or some thread locker to stop them vibrating loose. Now it's time to check the rotation of the motors. To aid in that I've put in uh, a little screw just so that, we can, so that we can see the direction of rotation. The actual supplied props are just push on. Let's get it plugged into the laptop and move into the motors tab. What I'm going to do is just to slowly spin the motors up so that I can see what direction they're going in. You may find the cursor keys easier to control the sliders than just using the mouse. Ah, and connecting a battery may help. The beeping that you can hear there is the alarm or no signal beep. It's not terribly loud, but I guess it's better than nothing. 
Let's throttle up a little now. So here we can see them spinning, but they're they're very slow. So you can either just touch the outside or wait for the screw to stop it. So we can see this one is rotating clockwise. And so is that one. In fact, it seems that they're all rotating clockwise. Looking here at the diagram in Betaflight, here the way that I remember things is that the bottom right is right in as much as the bottom right is going clockwise and then opposites attract the opposites. Number four is also rotating clockwise, which means that two and three need to rotate anti-clockwise. Therefore, we need to go into the BL Heli configurator and change the rotation of motors two and three. Now I'm going to assume that the numbering of the ESCs is the same as in Betaflight. We will find out, in which case motors 2 and 3 need to be reversed. Everything else can stay the same. Write that set up. And now everything is spinning the correct way. Nothing much more to do now, apart from a final check of the camera, and we'll go and see how she flies. Of course, before we fly, there's one important ritual which we must do, which is the weigh-in, similar to preparing for a boxing match. Let's switch on the scales, place the tube, set the zero, place your bets should be around 50 grams. 50.77. I think the actual EA Sheen site says something like 47, but uh, ours has come out a little heavier for some reason. The batteries that I'm using, uh, this high volt 450, comes in at 45.7 grams, and this high volt, also a 450, comes in at 43 grams. So the all up weight in the worst case with the heaviest battery is going to be 96.5 grams. I do have on order, coming on a slow boat from China, uh, another LiPo to compare with these, which is just a standard one and not the HV. So I'll be testing each of those for duration and also be taking a look at alternative props but that will be a subject for a different video. Whilst I consider myself to be pretty good at building these things, when it comes to flying it's a completely different matter. Here I got too far away and decided to bring it back and overcooked it. On this flight I was doing reasonably well, but perhaps got a bit too high. And again, it's such a tiny craft that once you've lost orientation, as I did, figuring out which way is up is too much of a challenge for me. And of course, the inevitable result. Still, I have some nice pictures of grass. 